desk. All right. Thank you very much. If you are just joining us, uh, my name is Dio Jagade. And uh, first of all, let me wish everybody a happy new year. I know it's February, but uh, this is the first uh, webinar we are having for the year. Uh, <laughs> every time I see Yemi Jagede nuts, it always, it always makes me laugh. That is my younger brother. My wife's bears Yemi Jagede, my younger brother bears Yemi Jagede. So he has to define himself that it's not my wife. So I don't make a mistake. Anyways, thanks for joining us. If you are just joining, it's good to have everybody here. We really appreciate you joining us and you know being back on the webinar. Um, we are excited for 2022. And what is uh, you know what is uh, coming up uh, for us for everybody uh, uh, today we have a very important uh, speaker with us. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about him as we get along. Um, I'll be hosting with my wife, the not the not the wife one, my original wife. So Jagade <laughs> Oluyemi, she's smiling over there. Uh, well, kicking off uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, I wanted to just, you know, uh, something I picked up while I was listening to a Les Brown YouTube when we were going for Thanksgiving. You know, he said, your attitude and aptitude determines your altitude. And I just had to, you know, I just had to pack the car. And I told my wife, can you just write that down and send it to me on WhatsApp? Like I need it later. You know, uh, so like your, your attitude, your behavior, your aptitude, which is your learning, how you grow, your knowledge, it determines your altitude. And that was why we actually put the lion, which is, if you know about a lion, it talks a lot about his attitude. And when you know about the ego, it talks about, you know, the ego's altitude. So your attitude and aptitude determines uh, your altitude. All right. If you are just joining us, um, please, if you're, this is your first time, if it's your first time joining us, uh, please, uh, let's get to meet you in the chat box. Uh, just uh, type in your first name and your location so that we can get to know you, you know, give a shout out. We we'll always like to welcome, you know, uh, everybody that is new amongst us. So in the chat box, you know, uh, let's get to know you. I'll make sure I, you know, uh, reach out to you. Uh, if you, uh, if it's your first time with us here on the webinar. All right. Uh, before we start, I got up some fun facts on retirement. I know Femi is going to do justice, so, but let me give him some hard work before I give him, you know, time to talk about it. All right, fun fact one, in America, basically, and I think mostly, I know in Nigeria too is like 65, but the average age of retirement is 62, and the current life expectancy is 79. I know your social security, you can start catching around 65, if I'm correct. So Femi, anything I'm wrong, just write it down and correct me when I'm done. Uh, so the average retirement is 62. So whatever you are now, start subtracting from 62, you are getting closer to retirement. Being rich in time makes for a happy retirement. When you are retiring, the old goal of retirement is to have time. Time to play, time to watch Netflix, time to hang out with the grandkids, time to spend time, you know, to go watch, you know, college games, whatever you want to do, time to travel, spend time with your spouse. That is what retirement is all about. And that is what I think we're going to be doing here today. For you to enjoy retirement, you don't want to be thinking about wealth or money at that point. All those ones should have been, all those ones should have already been taken care of. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Oh man, many workers don't have access to or participate in employment sponsor retirement plan. I purposely put this there so that Femi can talk about it. You know, there's the 401k, the Roth, the Roth 401k. You have your personal RIA. There's so many things that you can actually use. You know, uh, while I was in Nigeria, you have your pension plan that you have to have to eat. So all these things are important as part of retirement. If your employer does offer a plan, please take advantage of it. Most people are always like, I don't know much about those plans. Then I don't know what to do. Or I, don't, or I don't take care of, you know, I don't want to stress myself. Please, if you don't have the knowledge, you know, at least I'm your friend, reach out to me. When I started working here in the US, I spent, I noticed you have 30 days when they give you an offer. After your start, you have 30 days to 
first of all understand the plan. So I took my first 30 days to research on all the plans, and I think I can call myself a pro when it comes to when it when you get a job. I know the right plan. Just shoot me an email. We'll work through it together. All right. Retirees love to travel. I mentioned that already. Someone like me, I can't wait to travel. I, I'm traveling already, but I can't wait to retire and do more traveling. And they spend an, about $125 billion on leisure traveling each year. An average retiree spends, you know, they do five trips per annum. So that is a lot. That is a lot. So that's something you start thinking about when you're going to retire. When you retire, I guess what you'll be doing a lot. You'll be watching TV. So all those people that told me to watch all those uh, Netflix, Ozark, Money Heist, Green Leaf, I have like tons of it that I have not watched. I'm waiting till I retire. There will be so much more to watch by then. I'm just kidding. I'm watching already. All right. Delaying social security benefits will allow you to receive higher payments. Uh, Femi can talk about this more, but when you retire in the US, if you, I think if you retire by 55, you get more money. If you start collecting social security by 50, 65 or later, you get more money than when you start collecting earlier. So that is something you need to have at the back of your mind. Social security should only be part and not all of your retirement income. I think Femi is going to do justice on this. Femi and I, we talked about this for a long time. So don't only depend on your social security. And uh, I think this is the final one. At the end of the day, when you retire, guess what matters? It is the people that matter. Your network is your net worth. And that was what I put in the beginning. The people that you are retiring with, your friends, your family, your colleagues, people that matters to you, you know, those are the people that are going to actually make retirement very, very um, interesting. All right, before we move forward, I actually need to acknowledge someone. It's the first time he's joining us. Uh, Mutiu Babatunde is an uncle to me. I'll tell you a little bit story. Um, when I first got to America, like I landed in GFK. This was the brother that picked me up at the airport. I'm going to unmute you just to say one. He's a pastor. He's, oh, I just locked my screen. He's a, he's a project manager. He's a wonderful guy. He gave me my first pando yam in his house in America with his lovely wife. Every time I go to New York, I make sure I say hello and I visit his family. And um, he always tells me something. He says, Dio. Don't just call me anyhow. Every, every time you, you get, you know, you are doing great. Say, every time you make a good progress in America, call me. Say, I know you are doing fine, but every time you make a leap, every time you have something good, you have a baby, you got married, you got a job, you got a promotion, just say hello to me. That is when I want to hear from you. And, you know, I always make sure that when there's something good news, I reach out to Mr. Mutiv about today. So, uh, brother Mutiv. I asked you to unmute. Do you want to just say a quick hello before we move forward? It's good to have you here, sir. Oh, thank you, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. I, um, I've been following you on LinkedIn. I never when, I, knew. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw this, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, this is a good move in the right direction. A lot of us need to understand how these things work. Uh, you know, so many people feel wealth building is more about getting it now, you know. But um, I also came here to learn. So thank you for having the pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. It's really good to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. Without further ado, we have Femi Oguntu Ashe. He's a financial advisor uh, with Northwestern Mutual. When I went through his profile, he said he loves soccer and he has the body for soccer. So I'm going to ask him which position he plays by the time we are done today. Femi has five years experience in wealth management, education, retirement, income, life insurance, and financial planning. I've, uh, I've worked with Femi and we've been on calls several times discussing wealth building, you know, retirement plans. How, what are we going to do so that when we get to that point, we are not, you know, regretting our lives. So Femi is uh, a wonderful guy. He's always a phone call away or an email away. He, he, you know, uh, I, I, we, when I reached out to him in, in, in December, I think, or early January, I said, hey, Femi, I want people around us to understand retirement and you know how to be financially ind independent. He was even more excited than I was. I was like, hey, Dio, this is great. I love talking about this. This is something I want to, you know, what is the audience? And I was like, oh, bro, <laughs> I'll tell you everything you need to know. So Femi, 
uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, he's going to be sharing his screen to tell us about retirement goals, financial independence. And before I hand over to you, uh, I almost forgot. I'm hosting today's uh, webinar with my wife, my lovely wife, Yemi Jagade. She's going to be collating all the questions. So, uh, babe, you know, send, tell, calling you babe in the meeting is unofficial, right? But that's what I call you anyway. So, yeah, say something. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, Happy New Year. And um, yes, uh, like Dio said, I'll be taking the question and answer session. So um, as Femi um, is going on um, with this presentation, and you have any question, you can drop it in the chat box, or you can private chat me. Um, also, if you feel like you want to um, say your question one on one, you can uh, click on the reactions tab and raise your hand and follow you. So that's it for uh, me. All right. Thank Over you very you. much. All right, yeah. dear. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Femi, I'm going to hand over to you. Give us a few minutes for Femi to just, you know, set up his screen sharing and we can get going. All right. Thank you very much. Femi. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me get my screen share with everyone and then we can get... Uh, started. <clears throat> Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, so first and first, you know, um, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's a blessing to have this opportunity and the audience to uh, talk with about uh, financial planning, uh, particularly uh, retirement planning. Um, as uh, Dio had mentioned, I'm a uh, Northwestern Mutual uh, financial advisor. And uh, in my practice, uh, and our mission is to really focus on helping first generation immigrants like myself, uh, help them find their financial bearings here in the US and create generational wealth okay. for the future. Um, so right. I'm sure there will be more questions that uh, popping up as we are going along. I'll be taking you know a moment just to slow down, ask some questions, make sure that people are engaged and they are you know, actively listening. Um, but let's get started. So, uh, you know, when you think about back in our parents, you know, or grandparents time, um, pension was the main way that we funded retirement. Uh, that meant uh, most retirement income planning was done by someone else. Um, you, 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 you know, didn't just need to worry about EPAM much because it was being done by someone else. But today, pension is scarce. So planning for retirement is almost entirely left up to you. When you are planning for retirement, it is so easy to focus on saving as much as you can. And that's great. Um, but, you know, saving is important. But when you are concentrating on getting to retirement, it is easy to forget that you need to get through retirement. How much you save is only part of the planning. You need to figure out how to use money during retirement in a way that lets you make the most of it. And how to make sure that your retirement funds last, you know, entirely through your lifetime. Since this decision couldn't, could affect your financial security for the rest of your life, I think it's eventually worth planning for. Today, you know, we're going to be talking about retirement planning, but not much so about saving for retirement, but I'm going to focus on the second part of the equation that I mentioned, that is planning that you need to do to get through retirement. First, I'm going to help you understand the two phases to retirement planning and why its differences between them are so critical to your long-term financial security. Then I will talk about the six major risks that you'll face when you're planning for a financially sound retirement. Most importantly, I will share the strategies for creating a sound retirement plan. Let me start by asking just a general question. Um, does anyone think you know, they, they, there's a chance you, they would outlive their savings at retirement? Are we supposed to answer that? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just answer it internally, right? <laughs> okay, internally. All right. Yeah, good. answer it internally. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 you know, whether you Historical. there's no wrong or right answer to that. I'm not there. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Jimmy. <laughs> so you know, if you said yes, you're not alone. In fact, 67% of Americans will agree with you too. That's a lot of people when you aren't sure. You know the, the money that you that you need to get through retirement. So, how do you make sure that you have the best shot at making your money last? The first step is understanding the strategies you've been using throughout your working years to save for retirement. May not be the same as you will in, uh, 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 replicate when you are. Uh, going to try to get through retirement. That's because while you're working, you're accumulating your retirement funds. Your goal is building up that retirement savings so you can lead the life that you want at retirement. But then things change. You're no longer focusing on savings anymore. You're switching from accumulating your retirement fund to distributing them. That may not sound like it would be hard after all. Which would you rather be doing, saving or spending? But how you use this savings in retirement can make a big difference in how long your money lasts. Okay. You know, uh, it, it used to be, you know, that you follow that 4% rule. So withdrawing 4% of your, of your accumulated assets, your nest egg, so to say, each year, you were pretty well assured that, uh, of having enough to last you through retirement. Today though, it's a little more challenging and, and withdrawing a set amount is much riskier. The volatility of the market makes things less certain. We're living longer than previous generation, which means that our money needs to last longer. Plus how you withdraw can make a big difference in your income. When you take money out of a tax qualified accounts like Roth IRAs and uh, uh, Roth 401k versus taking money out of a taxable account such as traditional IRAs, all savings can have a big impact on how long your money lasts. Let's talk a little bit about what changes you would, you know, you would need to uh, implement to, uh, from one phase of retirement to, uh, or planning to another. One thing that changes in your investing time frame, which is the length of time that you that money will be invested before uh, you likely need to use it. That's because when you're saving for retirement, you have a pretty good handle on how long you'll be investing. And to a certain extent, it is controllable. If you're 45 and you plan to retire at 65, that gives you 20 years to get ready. After that though, uh, time is a bit of a wild card. No one knows how long they will actually live. You can live till 40, uh, 75, to 90, till 100. Planning for a lifetime of retirement income is very difficult when you don't know how long lifetime will be. So, while you're saving for retirement, you're generally trying to grow your savings as much as you can. Based on you know, what your risk tolerance is, your asset allocation, that is you know, you, how your fund is distributed between different types of investments is essentially set up to help you do that. After retirement, there are changes. Now, you want to generate as much income as possible uh, from saving according to your risk tolerance. Income is driving your asset allocation strategy. But the risk you face during the time is different too. Your retirement funds might not last as long as you need them to. Growth in your investments is still very important. For income is now center stage. There is a, a concept called sequence of uh, return that says that when losses occur, that can have a major impact on a retirement portfolio likelihood of success. 
So even when having a beard markets in the year surrounding your retirement date can have a huge impact on how long your money lasts. And the damage from those losses increases exponentially. If you're not taking withdrawals, if you are, excuse me, taking withdrawals from your portfolio at that time. Let me show you an example to help you uh, kind of get a better understanding of what I'm talking about here. And Dayo, I, I use you as the example here. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> Let's say that we have an hypothetical investor named Dial, who saved $500,000 in his retirement plan at work. To keep it simple, we we'll say his portfolio was invested in a balanced asset allocation, which means half stocks and half fund. He decided to retire when he turned 60. And after working with his advisor, he planned to withdraw 5%. Each year, adjusted with inflation from his portfolio. His, his retirement date and the date he started spending from this retirement savings was January 1st, 1973. You may be wondering why he picked that date. It's because 10 days after that, on January 11th, 1973, was a big market downturn that started its two year bear market for stock. Using this returns from this period, Let's see if the market volatility had any effect on Dio's retirement. Assuming I kept taking this, you know, that 5% uh, withdrawal like we had planned, Dio's portfolio didn't last as long as he needed it to. You can see on this left that he ran out of money by August 1994 when he was in his early 80s and pre, you know, still pretty active at that time. Um, when, if the, but what if this sequence of return was flipped? What if instead of down market starting when he was retired in uh, 1973, it didn't start until much later? Take a look at the, uh, the charts on the left. If the high returns from 1994 had happened first and the low returns from uh, 1973 had happened last, Dial's portfolio would have increased substantially over time, more than tripling in value. That's still assuming he took 5% withdrawal he had been planning all along. Now, let's talk about what's different here, right? When you are withdrawing from your portfolio, at the same time, it's experiencing a large decline. It is difficult for it to rebound, even if you have a higher return in later years. The earlier those losses are poor, the greater the damage. Of course, this example is an hypothetical and the past performance definitely does not guarantee future result. but this helps explain why timing is such a big deal for your retirement portfolio. And if you need any uh, you know, other example, talk to someone who reached retirement at the age uh, you know, between 2007 and 2008. And how to reimagine their retirement because of this financial crisis that was going on at that time. Okay, let's talk about six main risks you are likely to face when you're planning for retirement. You might have thought about some of this already, but when you are in retirement, their impact on your financial security changes and how they affect you can vary depending on your individual circumstances. That's why when I'm working with my clients, I spend a, a great deal of time making sure that their retirement income addresses all of this risk. Okay. So just a general question. And you don't want to answer out loud, but what do you think of this risk? One, a scale of one to five, being one that no problem and five keeps me up at night. Which are your five for you? There's no right or wrong here, right? Everyone sees this risk differently. So the goal isn't to agree, but just to give you a feeling of for what you know, you're most concerned about. Spend a little bit of time looking at all of this risk and let me know if anyone has any question.
Are we supposed to grade it from one to five? Yeah, personally, again, internalize that. But we'll, we'll move on in a moment. And write your questions down if you have questions around this piece, right? And we can talk about it and we can send it to Yami, who is uh, obviously keeping, keeping tab of that uh, to answer the question. I think for, for the present, most of us know the one that is worrying us the most. <laughs> yes, what is worrying you? Uh, Talk now. Uh, it's inflation speak now, bro. Speak for yourself. <laughs> it's inflation now. We know the score. <laughs> okay. What, what, whatever is concerning you, we're going to go through each and one of these concerns, right? Because there's a risk that at some point in retirement that we're all going to face. Okay. So I'm going to go through each of these and talk about uh, some of the content or context of it in a little bit more uh, deeper. Uh, okay. Let's talk about markets. The market is a big risk to your retirement. That's mainly because no one can predict when a downturn of the market we hit or how long it would actually last. And those downturn of the market can affect your retirement savings and income. As we just saw with uh, Dyer's example, there's also the possibility that timing of the market downturn can have a drastic effect on how long your money lasts. In fact, the closer you are to retirement, the greater the impact market risk may have on your plan. That's because the older you are, the less time you have to recover if the market takes a tumble. Market, market risk is always there. You can't avoid it. All you can do is try to lessen the impact on the retirement savings. Does anyone have any idea about how you could actually protect your retirement savings against market volatility? Bonds. Yeah. Say it again, Dario. Bonds. Bonds. I thought, I thought bonds is a little bit less risk. Sure. What about inflation? Someone said inflation earlier, right? Let's talk about that, right? Bonds is good, right? It's conservative, it's safe. But in the long period of time, how sustainable is that? Right? One of the most important steps you can take is to make sure that your asset allocation and the risk profile are per appropriate for you. Usually that means that I, I sorry. Sorry, someone uh, put a mark on it. Let's continue. It's going to clean up. Okay. I think Usually, I that means that, you know, that as you move through life, you're gradually shifting your mix of investment. And I'm glad you mentioned bonds earlier. Okay. Another way to address market risk is to pay for essential expenses in retirement with money that isn't tied directly to stock market. For example, you could earmark your social security benefits a pension or annuity funds to pay for all your mortgage or rent, food and other necessities. This can help you ensure your needs are met regardless of the market condition. You can also have cash reserve. A separate bucket with enough money to fund up to two years of living expenses not covered by guaranteed income stream. A cash reserve account can provide liquidity and easy access to your money. And by having money set aside for basic living expenses, a cash reserve can also help you avoid having to sell other portfolio holdings during market prices being lower. And I actually include real estate. Now, I intentionally did not put real estate as part of our, our conversation today because it's not part of a retirement product. Now, real estate can be considered an asset, but it isn't a product. The second key retirement risk is your own longevity. In the US, a man who turns 65 today has a 50% chance of living beyond age of 88. A woman has a 50% chance of living to uh, 90 and beyond. And if you're married, there's a 50% chance that you and your spouse will live beyond 94. 
if you ask me. That's a long retirement, which is a lot of ways. It's a great news. Don't we all want to enjoy retirement for as long as possible? But that also creates a big challenge because your retirement savings need to cover your expenses for a longer life. So how do you have, how long do you have to plan for uh, retirement? To make sure that your retirement income plan goes the distance, your retirement plan should take into consideration and the chances that you might live to 90, 95, and even longer, and that you could be retired longer than you work. There are some tools that are available to help you manage your risk. And I'll be sure to help you understand that a little bit more. Any ideas what those are? What can you do to help secure your steady stream of income for the rest of your life? Any idea, anyone? Um, what, what from my side, I would say, this case speaking, I would say you should, um, for now, invest in HSE. So basically, if you invest in HSE, then it means that when you're older, you can have uh, um, disposable, more, more income that you can use tax-free for healthcare purposes. So that way, you don't have to stream your, um, your, your um, tax, uh, sorry, your, um, your income. Husband. Yes, you don't have to spring your income during that period. Definitely, as one gets older, healthcare expenses will increase. Very so, good. invest. I mean, setting aside funds now will sort of uh, minimize the uh, direct expenses. Um, and that is that is very older age. And, and is it cast? Yeah, cast speaking. Cast. Well, thank you for that answer. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. But this is more precisely talking about, you know. Not, not living too long, but that's talking about health crisis, which is one of the risks that was listed. And I'll be sure to circle mm -hmm. back to that. But I, I'm noting that your HSA is a, one of the finest way for you to also plan for this. And we'll be sure to circle back to that. But thank you for your answer, Cass. Okay, let's move on. When it comes to meeting expenses in retirement, most people look at their guaranteed sources of income to start with. Dio mentioned this at the beginning. Social security is one of those things. And it does promise to pay some benefit for as long as you leave. But that monthly benefit generally isn't enough. Who can trust on the government these days? And when you decide to start taking social security, it's actually important as well. When you're factoring social security into your retirement plan, you need to weigh the options, whether you're better off with the early for low payments or later with higher payments. There are fewer and fewer pension plans around, but if you're lucky enough, you have one. That's another guaranteed source of retirement income. Annuity can also be a solution to longevity risk. Not health risk, but longevity risk. They're one way, uh, excuse me, they're one of the few investment vehicles that provides a guaranteed income for life that can help improve the odds that your portfolio will survive your whole retirement. An income annuity, just to kind of give you exactly what they are, it's not a common thing uh, within our natural community. An income annuity is a contract with an insurance company in which you can convert a portion of your retirement savings, like your 401k, your IRA, into a steady stream of income. Now, the insurance company then promises you guaranteed income for your entire lifetime or a specific period of time. But then the question around the market's risk so far or longevity risk? So a quick question, could you elaborate on um, the difference between both of them again? Um, I, I know you mentioned it, but I just want to be very clear. About which one specifically market risk? Um, the income annuity and and it's, and how actually the, the, the market risk actually impact that. So the market risk does not impact annuity. The market risk, 
is the volatility that the natural highs and lows of the market. One example that I'll actually uh, try to ex extract from is, you know, if you, uh, you are investing in, in Facebook, known to be matter these days, right? The stock's prices was very, very favorable a month ago. So when you look at the stock prices today, it's a lot different. That's an example of market risk. Now, when we're talking about having some tools like fixed income, like pension and annuity, what it does is gives you a fixed income that lasts you through your lifetime, right? Mm. Which in effect allows you to be able to pay for your fixed expenses like your mortgage, you know, keeping the lights on in your house and things that you just are going to need to pay for, right? There are not a, they're considered a necessity essentially. Uh, I hope that helps answer your question, Ibika. I don't want to spend too much time on it. We can certainly circle back to this towards the back end, but I hope that addresses your question. Yeah, it does. Thanks. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Um, the third risk that I want to share with you is inflation and taxes. Inflation and taxes are risk to your retirement too. Inflation has remained relatively low in recent years. I know Cass mentioned that earlier, <laughs> but it can be a huge impact on your long-term financial security, as big as an impact as the market. For example, after 15 years at the 4% annual inflation rate, the purchasing power of 100,000 is down to 56,000. Let me say it another way. If it takes $100,000 a year to support your lifestyle at age 65, it would almost take $200,000 a year to support that same lifestyle 15 years later at 80. So much for expenses going down at retirement. Any ideas how you can keep inflation from cutting into your spending power? Anyone know? Investment in, you can keep. Go on. investment in assets. Investment in assets. Fixed assets. Yeah. Who said fixed asset? I did. Emika. Why did you say that, Emika? Because they do appreciate over time. Um, houses and the cost of um, they do appreciate. I think that's the long and short of the story there. So they're not fixed asset then. It depends on how you see it though. <laughs> but assets would be the best um, hedge against inflation. Sure, equitable assets, precisely. One strategy is to keep some stocks in your portfolio to help protect your spending power in retirement. Stocks has historically been proven the growth necessary to keep pace with inflation over the long period of time. If possible, you can also delay taking your social security until age 70. That will prove you with a higher, or I should say that will provide you with a higher monthly benefit. And social security is one of those few sources of retirement income that automatically provides periodic adjustment for inflation. Okay. Rising prices aren't the only thing nipping away at your retirement savings though. Taxes do that too. And for many people, taxes is one of the largest annual expenses in retirement. All that money you've been sucking away, tax deferred in your 401k or other employer sponsored plan, that money is taxable when you withdraw in retirement. So is any money that you set aside in your traditional IRA? And because that money is subject to ordinary income taxes, you can end up being, you know, shortened on your cash flow that you expected. And that could make it more difficult for you to meet your day-to-day -day expenses and can also push you into a higher tax bracket, making the issue more troubling. 
So what's the solution? Of course, it's planning, but more concisely, in this case, tax planning, which is a, a very important piece of retirement income planning. Many retirees have a number of different uh, taxable accounts, tax deferred accounts, uh, like 401k, traditional IRAs, tax-free accounts such as Roth IRAs. Choosing which account to actually tap into and when can make a big difference in how long your time. Recording in progress. And there is no set answer either. It depends on your specific situation and expected tax rates in the future. In some cases, it makes sense to convert portion of your tax deferred account to a tax-free account, such as Roth IRA. You will have, a, you will have to pay taxes on the amount converted, but as long as you meet certain requirements, your distribution in retirement will be tax-free. This strategy is especially appealing if you think tax rates will be much higher in the future. You can also use cash value from your permanent life insurance to help you fund part of your retirement. Even though you usually buy life insurance to protect your family if you pass away unexpectedly, the cash value on a permanent policy can give you another source of tax-free income. That's, that's because permanent life insurance allows you to take money as needed through withdrawals and loans. And the death benefit in most instances passes directly to your beneficiary, income tax-free. As you probably figured out, tax position is complicated. And what works for one person may not work for another person. That's why it's important to talk to your tax advisor before making any decision. Um, Femi, uh, I have a Femi that wanted to ask a question. So if you don't mind. Sure. Femi, do you want to go? Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Hi, Femi, thanks. So uh, so in terms of the Roth IRA, right? I know, I know definitely, you know, you kind of, they take out, basically you take out your taxes now so that when you retire, you, I mean, when you're about to retire, you don't have to pay taxes, right? Yeah, but the, the the other school of thought is that if I do a traditional IRA, right, where my taxes, you know, my taxes are not not taken out, right, by the time I, I decide to retire, right, let's say at that point, because I think, I'm not sure, I think it's based on yes, your income at that time, right, what your income, uh, what, what your income bracket is at that time, that's, that's when they're taxing you off. So if I know that by the time my my time I retired, my income bracket is going to be very low. Sorry, then, you, you, there's another person talking. Um, it's not me. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm looking. I don't see that person talking. I'm trying to find the person. We will have to set this up for tomorrow. Now you see the status is. Okay. Go sorry, Femi. Go on. Okay. So, so what I was saying is that if you decide to go that route, right? So at that point, it doesn't really matter if I know that I'm going to fall within a low income tax at that time, and I'm going to have enough money to work with. So if they tax me, they tax me at a lower income. It doesn't really matter if I have like two million dollars inside that, or a million dollars inside that. Doesn't really matter in terms of letting them tax me. I mean, letting them tax me now and wait until I retire, or just if I fall into the tax bracket at that age, just just take that gamble. Well, the question is, do you feel like taxes will be higher in the future than it is today? It depends. The question is, it depends. It depends on, yeah, it depends. And strategic thinking, school of thought would tell us that if it depends, then both is good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, again, you have to think about history of taxes in America. And you know, in 20, 20, uh, 2017, we fell into the lowest tax bracket. Uh, in a long, long time. So if you think we are in the lowest tax bracket, marginal tax bracket today, the question is, well, would he go back up or would he continue to be uh, going down? We don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, thanks. I was just, I was just curious because I, I know, you know, there are two school of thoughts uh, around it. And if I, if I have like $3 million in Tesla shares at that time, who knows? So, but it's a, it's a, it's a gamble. Right. If you have $3 million in Tesla share at, let's call it, you know, 20, 
42, right? And you're taking money out. Well, that's going to be considered, you know, it's, it's going to be taxed differently um, if it's a non-qualified assets versus if it's a qualified asset. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and those all matters. But again, uh, planning for all of those variables so, uh, is the strategy. Okay. okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my, my apologies on Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Femi, all I was right. going to say uh, some other questions came in uh, regarding sure. 401k and um, Roth IRA. Sure. So from Kess, uh, he said, how can we maximize our Roth IRA and advice on uh, rollover IRA and consolidation of different 401k? How can we maximize it? Yes. How can we maximize our Roth IRA? And then he needs advice on rollover IRA and consolidation of different 401k. Okay. And obviously that's very uh, specific, but the way to maximize your Roth 401k is to max it out really. And besides just maxing it out, your asset allocation, uh, which is the, you know, the ratio between bonds and stocks and your portfolio has to be, well, depending on your um, on how old you are, how close you are to retirement, should be aggressive, right? If you are younger, you want to be aggressive allocated. If you're older, yeah, maybe, a, you know, a balance asset allocation or a conservative asset allocation could be appropriate for you. But it's a scenario-based, uh, and that's why I cannot give kind of a general answer. Um, but I, I'll be more than happy to uh, connect um, outside of this call to actually chat about recording chat about. in progress but, you know it's not it, you know it's each his own in this financial planning game and uh, i cannot generalize because what works for someone that's older might not work for you right and what works for someone that's younger might not work for someone that's older so it's really based on your risk tolerance uh, factored into the asset allocation all right uh, femi uh just uh, i think uh... As much as I want us to quickly finish the slide, we can focus on questions. But for those that raised up their hands, I feel like maybe their question has to do with the current slide. So I'll let Dami go first, then Jimmy. Then let's go back to the presentation so that we can finish it up. Then we'll go back to the Q&A. So that way, we're not breaking in between, all right? Sure, so da sure. Dami, do you want to unmute and ask a question? Then Jimmy, go next. Hi guys, uh, my question is regarding the Roth IRA. Um, for 2022 tax, I believe the maximum is $6,000. So what if your income has like exceeded that, like your, your income is at the limit where you cannot contribute into Roth IRA because you've passed the income threshold. I hear people talk about um, backdoor Roth IRA. What do you have to say about that? Is it something you would advise or just diversify uh, uh, your- Sure. That's a, no, true, that's, that's a great question. question. Wait, Thank, question. You Thank you for question. asking that question. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. Uh, what I would say about that is, um, first, first and first, if your income is already, uh, you could already consider a high income earner, right? Then first and first, let's max, <laughs> let's max out max all out. of your traditional. All of your traditional. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, let's max out let's all your max out all your traditional account. 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 I'm hearing feedback. Can you? Yeah, Dami, please stay on, stay on mute. So that way too. Let's you. max right. out your traditional accounts as much as possible. Now, if you have additional disposable income to still save, then that strategy will be a fine strategy for you to get you into saving more dollars, but you're paying taxes on that dollars, that $6,000 that goes into the uh, Roth. Eventually, through a corridor, which is called that backdoor rock. Yes, that's a, it's, a, it's a fine strategy to continue to save for retirement. And when you do get to retirement, this is money that's gonna be tax free to you. But the government wants your money today. And they also want your money at retirement. I usually talk about uh, one of these things, uh, you know, also is Nigerian, the, you know, RMD. In American, uh, it's called require minimum distribution. But also as Nigeria would know it as uh, Richard Mope Damijo, which is a way for us to, you know, understand that at the point of view 72 and a half, the government will actually force you to sell out of your qualified investment account, whether you are, and whether the market is up 
whether the market is down because everything that we know around here is run basically through taxation. Dami, I hope that answers your question. But that was a very good question. That's a very good question, buddy. Yes, thank you. All right, Jimmy. All right, Jimmy. You want to go next? Okay. Hi, Hi, Hi. Okay. Okay. I have two questions. Go ahead. Question. So the first one has to do with, uh, I mean, I know different companies have um, different forms of 401k, but in my particular case, um, with bonuses and, and things coming Q1, early April. Um, so one of the things that I've done historically is um, try to max it around that time. The idea around that is, you know, you can, the law allows you to put 50% of your uh, bonuses into uh, 401k. I put some in uh, normal Roth and some in, uh, sorry, uh, normal 401k and some in Roth uh, 401k. The idea is just to reduce the taxable income. We all know bonuses are taxed about 40%. So if you can put 50% of that, then you only be taxed at 40% uh, of the 50% that, that you, you're taking out. Uh, that said, um, by April, uh, early April, um, you already max out on what you can uh, put in 401k. But I think the idea, my thinking is you still get the, the compounding. So May through the end of the year, I can't put anything in 401k because I've already maxed out. So I want to see what's your strategy, uh, or what you think of that strategy or just finding a number that distributes everything throughout the whole year. Uh, that's question one. Question number two is um, with respect to the looming um, uh, war between NATO and um, you know, uh, Russia and all that stuff. I mean, some of us have seen how the stock market tanked uh, and I'm not, you know, you know, it's a long term thing, but I wanted to see what your outlook is for near term. I mean, if you can save your money to all these passes by, um, you know, what you would do with your portfolio, with your 401k portfolio in, in the near term. Cool. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for the question. Um, if I should reiterate what I hear on your first aspect of your question was uh, around your uh, bonuses and uh, effectively putting it into your uh, your qualified retirement account. Uh, the, you know, depending on the 401k benefits, the rules allows you uh, to pull up to, uh, I want to say 60,500 away base 2022, right? Last year it was 58. So you can do a lot with that, right? Now, between, and this is between the bonuses, right? And your employer match, but you alone um, can only put 20,500 in 2022 through your contribution, right? Plus the match. And then plus to, uh, through all uh, the after uh, tax contributions, right? You could still do a lot. So I think that's pretty step, you know, straightforward. Now, if you have enough, if you've already maxed it out by April, you have to find a different vehicle. Your problem is different, <laughs> which is a good problem to have, right? But your problem is different. And you have to be creative in getting money to other instruments. Could be that backed or Roth. Um, that, you know, I, I forgot who mentioned that earlier. Um, could be that backdoor route that you're now utilizing at that point. It could be now using maybe a permanently structured life insurance, right? It could be, it, you've got to be creative because your problem now is not the same as everyone else's. You're a consider high income earner because naturally not a lot of people can pull, not a lot of people even are maxing out there. Um, you know, they, 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 from their own contribution, uh, that's $20,000 a year. So you got to be a little bit more creative. And for someone like that, you need a financial advisor because you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. That's one. And you ask about, you know, with what's going on with uh, NATO and uh, you, uh, you, uh, Russia, excuse me. Well, the, you know, depending on what, you know, what age you are, um, where you are in your financial planning, you, you know, one of the things that comes to my mind is you being properly diversified, right? Um, there are nine major asset classes that are out there, right? You got S&P, got mid cap, small cap, uh, international emerging market, international developed market, commodities, um, 
and much more. I can't think of them right now, but you have to be diversified because all of those asset classes will win at some point. REITs, for example, right? REITs was killing it last year, right? So if you're essentially a focusing on what's going on in the international emerging market space, what about REITs, right? What about S&P, right? Until, you know, the, the last three years was great for S&P and mid cap and small cap, US market essentially, right? So if you are heavily focused on REITs, you're not making the killings there, right? Now, when situation have changed, now REITs, uh, REITs is what's killing it, S&P, mid cap and small cap are not doing so well anymore, right? But this asset class go in and out and they have one that wins at the top, one that's losing at the bottom. And that's a great opportunity for young investor. Because if you have a, a very, if you have a passively managed portfolio, it is different to an actively managed portfolio, whereby the, the, no, the, the CFAs and the gurus of investments are literally buying lower and depressed asset classes on your behalf. So by the time they rebound, right, you're now winning at the top. So if you're not doing that, if you're not using some of those, uh, you know, strategies, you're probably missing out. So to each his own, and that's why I'm not very specific in answering your situational question on the second aspect, but to each his own in that, uh, to, to answer your question. Thank you. Right. Quick one, since you mentioned REITs, um, I was going to ask what you thought about um, this a company called Fundrise. I'm sure you're aware of them. I do not know who that is. REITs uh, okay. are a package indexed of um, of commercial real estate and such. So they're not just one company. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a company it. that does invest in that. It's called Fundrise. Uh, maybe I can talk to you uh, offline. Uh, yeah, to, and I do not know that later. particularly. Yeah. Jerry, talk, to, talk to talk to me about Fundrise later. All right, uh, please, just uh, go, okay, we'll call you later. So that we don't throw Femi off the balance too much. And I know we have one or two more questions. Let's allow him finish the presentation so that we can actually get the real value. Then uh, question and answer will come. Go, okay, I promise you when it's QA, you know, uh, Yemi will ask you first. So please bear with us. Femi, you can go, you can go ahead. Yeah, so we've spent a lot of real time answering questions. Those are all great questions. I appreciate everyone for you know chiming in and being very engaged. Um, I want to skip the last three risks just because of time. And I wanna go straight to uh, just the solution, okay? Um, let me park here real quickly. Okay. So let's, let me ask you just a general question. Did any of you plan for vacation in the last year or two? Raise up your hand if you did. When you, when you think about vacation planning, you know, you spend time thinking about picking the location, finding the right hotels, carrying the web for flights and uh, vacation packages. Now, there's some people who spend actually more time planning for vacation than they do for retirement. But think about it, think about it this way, okay? Retirement is going to be the longest vacation of your life. You need to put that time in. You need to be, you know, you need to really plan for it. So you can help make sure that you have the retirement that you want and that your money lasts as long as you need it to. Okay. With everything I've talked about today, you can see why retirement planning can be boiled down into one single number, right? And why it can't be solved with a single product or a single saving vehicles. You need to think about it as an evolving journey, a lifelong process that takes thoughts, planning, and ongoing review and updates as your life changes. So how do you get started? Let's talk about three main strategies to help you start planning, okay? First, you want to create an income for life. After a lifetime of saving and investing, the goal is retirement, in retirement, excuse me, is to have the income to live the life you want and for that money to last as long as you live. 
To make that retirement plan work in life, you have to start by putting it down on paper. You need to create a budget, it is critical. A good strategy, a strategy, excuse me, for creating a budget is to divide your expenses into two buckets, one for essential, the other for your discretionary, aka your wants, right? Once you've agreed on this list, put in a monthly cost next to each item and then match them up to your fixed income sources, i.e your pension plan, if you have it, i.e. your social security. Okay. Like I mentioned earlier, social security, a pension if you have one, an annuity, an employer-sponsored plan like 401k, IRAs and Roth, personal savings investment, business assets. Most retirees rely on multiple sources of retirement income to meet their expenses. The key is to identify which of them you can count on and pair it essential expenses with those fixed income sources. After all those critical expenses are covered, your remaining income can be used for everything else because the discretionary items are much easier to adjust in your budgeting depending on, on how your investment does. An effective planning strategy comes buying defense and offense. It is important to each and everyone that are planning for retirement to strike the right balance between them. That's why strategy number two, protecting your assets is very important. Before you retire, you want to protect yourself against the event that you could be interfered with the, with the ability to earn an income such as uh, you know, uh, an accidental, um, uh, an accidental disability and such. Disability insurance can help you cover your income if you end up being off work for a while to cover an event. We talked earlier about long-term and I missed this earlier, so my apologies for not covering based on time. Often between, you know, in our natural uh, community, we don't talk enough about long-term uh, long care. Something I would love to share a little bit more light about in a different conversation due to time, okay? And the last thing is legacy, living a legacy. After protecting your retirement fund, you can move on to other important goals you might have like living a legacy. It's, it's very common for this to become more important to someone as they get older. Unfortunately, when you're, getting, uh, when you're starting to think about leaving something behind, uh, when you are gone, it's usually about the same time when you start getting concerned about running out of money in retirement. One solution for this could be permanent life insurance. Like I said earlier, most people buy it to protect their family if they die too soon. And that's a great reason, but there are also other uses for it as well. The point of all of this testing really is to identify plans that can give you a higher level of confidence about your financial security during retirement years, okay? And I've mentioned a lot of scenarios, but ultimately, yeah, I feel you deserve a, a retirement income strategies that you can count on, no matter what. One that is dependent on not only not dependent on the whim of the economy, your employer, or the government, or anything other than what's envisioning for retirement for you. We've covered a lot of grounds today. I just want to, you know, kind of pause there. You know, have someone think more about more question, um, so I don't go on and on because uh, I, I, I do really enjoy talking about this, and I can get really nerdy about it. So, um, Dio, if you, you know, if there are more questions, I don't know how much time we've got. I should have asked that in the, in the beginning. Uh, my apologies. No, um, no All okay. right, thank you. Thank you very much, Femi. I want to do that to my wife. I think this is the most interesting part. We want to make sure, you know, all the questions are answered. 
and people can go, you know, with more understanding. So I want it, I'll hand it over to her. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat or raise up your hand and uh, Yemi will coordinate it. All right, thank you. Yes, uh, the first question is a follow-up question from the one that Kes asked earlier about 401k and Roth IRA. And uh, he wanted to know how we can avoid penalties on moving from 401k rolled over to annuity of what we want to pull out of the annuity. I hope that's not biggest. Okay. And I'll reiterate what I think I heard is moving from a traditional account, either be um, um, you know, 401k or IRAs and moving that into an annuity. Right. So essentially- and, and, and how we can avoid penalties on that, on, on the move. Sure. Right. So the 401k is the shell. What you put in the 401k can be different. Just like you can pull a single of stocks into your 401k, you can put some other tools inside of it. So when you move a rollover into an annuity, right? And it can still be an annuity with a shell of a qualified account, i.e. Your, um, your IRA. So with this strategy, you won't pay um, the penalty with that strategy. But not a lot of people understand the nuances around that. So you, you always, almost all the time, have to you know, leverage a use of, a, of an expert to help you do that. So you're not uh, being hit with the you know, taxes and penalty. But oftentimes when you do that, there is no penalty that you have to pay. Great, thank you. Next question, or oh, you want to call Goke? It was recently yes. designed. Yes, next Goke, yes. I think Goke dropped off, I can't see him. You want to go to the next question? Well, I, those are all the questions that I have. All right. Well, let me, uh, I have one or two questions, but before then, if you have any questions, okay, Dami, you want to go ahead? Let's uh, people speak up for questions directly. Go ahead, Dami. Uh, my Dami. question is not really a question, just to add to what Mr. Femi said about the, or the question somebody asked about rolling over your 401k to, an annuity. I think what the person was trying to, what they're trying to understand is if you have a 401k and you want to roll it over, as long as the check is not written out to you, it's written to the new annuity policy, then you're fine. But if, if the check is written out to you, then you'll be taxed on that check. I think that's what the person was trying to understand. Like by oh, Okay, this, this is the person. This is the person. Let me just dive in. Let me just dive in. <laughs> The, the, the key question for me now is, I have an annuity. I mean, when I left a particular company, I rolled over my 401k and you know, they were advertising, oh, you guys can come, this is good. New life. Basically, it was New York Life Insurance, was very specific. I pushed uh, my 401k there and it's an IRA on its own. So it's like a rollover IRA. The question now is that I got a bit, and I've been looking at the returns now for a number of years. I want to move it out. But there's this cap that they say, is, uh, they call it, um, uh, it's almost like something that you have to leave behind if you move your monies away. So my question now is, if I'm not taking a disbursement, do you know whether there's any way one can just roll it over to like maybe Vanguard or someone else uh, without paying that penalty? Uh, yeah. Just generic, it may not be specific in sure. this case, but that's a generic question I'm trying to find. I want to move my phones away from there. You said it's an annuity. Yes, an annuity. It's an annuity with New York Life Insurance. So, um, so you can move the funds, but I think it was Dami that was uh, mentioning that you need to move the funds directly to a different uh, type of uh, IRA. So it's you know it's just it will be a rollover. You know, actually, it wouldn't be considered a rollover. You're just transferring it into a different account, essentially. So you could do that. Okay. Yeah, without, it needs to be another qualified account. Now, if they write you a check and you get the check for longer than 60 days, then you'll be taxed. Okay, you'll be taxed mm -hmm. based on the amount that you get. And also you'll be penalized at about 10%. But if you get the check in and, and you move the money, 
within again 60 days into the account, then you will have, you will be able to uh, get around uh, the penalty and taxes. But more concisely is to see the st statement of account and understand a little bit more about the specifics uh, with that type of uh, account. Okay. Um, Femi Adebayo, you want to go? Yes, I have a question. So uh, Femi, just to reiterate, uh, let's correct my, my last question I had. So, uh, so it's better to have both your money in, in rot and also in traditional, if you can afford to do that, right? 100%. And again, okay. it's, it's more strategic because you never know when taxes are going to be high. You never know when taxes are going to be low, right? Okay. So I would use an example. Let's say you uh, you fall into a 33% tax bracket and your goal for retirement planning is to get $150,000 out each year. Okay. Right? If all you have is your qualified account, you're going to be paying $50,000 to Uncle Sam. Now, okay. if your goal is still to have $150,000 and you want to reduce your tax bracket, essentially having both is great because now the strategy will be taking more money. The taxes are high when you're taking money out. So take more money from your tax-free bucket, right? For mm -hmm. example, let's say, hey, we take out $100,000 from that tax-free bucket, right? Mm. Now, that $50,000 that you take from your qualified account, you will pay less. It will drop your tax bracket from 33 that initially was, right? To something mm. like Okay. Uh, thank you. Just a quick follow-up there. Please bear, bear with me. So, and just for the record, because I know that Dio might ping me later and say you have to remember less than tax Tesla shares. I don't, I don't have, I don't even own Tesla shares. So, just FYI. But, uh, I think the second question is more of do you advise in your four, I mean, in your ROT or IRA to also use that to buy stocks? Because I know some people use that to buy stock. Do you advise that or it depends on what your risk tolerance is? Well, to each his own, right? Um, yeah. Not something I'll personally advise if clients because there's other ways to go about that, right? Okay. A lot of times when you buy singular stocks and you own um, a mutual fund, you are essentially, you're probably likely being very exposed in one aspect. And, and I'll, I'll make another example of, of Facebook specifically here, just because I know uh, what has happened in the last month with them. So if it's Facebook, and it depends on where you are. Now, someone can say, I truly, truly believe in Facebook. I think they're going to go, they're the best thing to you know, slice bread. That's your preference. But the truth is, if you are, you know, in that type of, uh, you know, singular uh, stocks in your prof in your uh, retirement accounts, there's a big volatility that would happen, especially if you have more dollars inside of the both inside of that account, right? A thirty percent on a million dollar, right? That's you losing three hundred thousand dollars. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, the exactly. risk in, 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 in leveraging a singular stocks is just okay. much greater. Yeah. I'll say that it's not good. It just means you're also going to experience higher volatility. And the key word of the day should be volatility because okay. that's what we've been experiencing this year. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Before I call, okay, it looks like uh, Femi came for me today. First, it was... <laughs> It was me that he used for example. That's why I changed my background to the retirement at the back at the background. Then he jumped on Meta and Facebook. Don't worry, Facebook will bounce back. So. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, you, do you still have uh, your question or it has been answered? Yes, I do. Uh, can every, can uh, everybody hear me very well? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my question is about uh, um, saving for education of, of kids. Um, I, I did a little bit of research and um, I couldn't find what I think is very good, it, you know, especially the five to nine. I don't like it. Um, I don't know if anybody's doing it because there's so, so many uh, restrictions ascribed to it. So does your company, Northwest Mutual, have anything that's very good that would also tie in a bit of life insurance, 
for education benefit for college for kids? Yes, uh, Goke, uh, the short answer is yes. Um, and you can, you, we can look at uh, other things like, uh, you, you know, um, UTMA, um, obviously some nuances that you need to understand about that. You could also look at life insurance, but you know, let, let's set those th two things aside. There are two pieces that you are talking about here. And that's one, market, right? And two, you are looking for something that's going to be uh, guaranteed never to go backwards. I don't believe one is better than the other. I think both are great for college education planning, right? Because when you look at investments in general, we talked about volatility earlier. Volatility makes people do really stupid things. So if you're, you know, at the points where your child needs to go to uh, school, right? And the market is down. Is that the best time for you to start selling? Who knows? It's up to you, right? But if you have something that's safe, guaranteed not to go backwards, it can help you bridge the gap. You need something, you know, in both aspects. It's about strategic planning. And that's based on the moment and how we effectively use the moment to take, make relative, relative advantage for a person. But yes. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you know, maybe sync up with Dyer, uh, whatever. Um... <coughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 yes. I put uh, Femi's uh, information on the screen so that you can, you know, if you want to connect with him, yeah, that is a uh, phone number, email, and a uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you will be able to explain further or maybe explain those products that he talked about for, you know, college kids with you. So I think uh, that would be better. Uh, if it's not real estate, then don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know everything. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Goki. Uh, any other question before we wrap up? I have one last question, but any other question before we wrap up? We've been here for an hour plus. Uh, try to make sure that we entertain all the questions before we go. Any one last question? Is Kes trying to speak? No, no, no question. Just uh, thank you for organizing this, Diane. Thank you, Femi, for, for presenting. Uh, lots to learn from you. Thank you. So because you are feminine, you are beating Femi. All right, it's all good. All right. <laughs> one last question, Femi, just for a uh, uh, someone just learning about retirement. Can you just, just break this down? Traditional 401k, Roth 401k, traditional IRA, Roth IRA. In fact, there's another one, after tax 401k, I think. So there's so many things out there and you read so many things. It gets people very confused. What are the difference in all this 401k, IRA, trots, not raw, traditional? Then we can wrap up. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the question. So, um, so traditional, you know, the, the, it boils down to traditional accounts and Roth account. Under your traditional accounts, you have IRAs, individual retirement accounts, and you also have 401k. You can also have SEP IRA for people that are self employed. Uh, and the list goes on, but they're all under the same tax code, okay? And then a Roth account, okay? You can have Roth 401k and you can have Roth IRA. Again, the big difference between traditional accounts and Roth accounts boils down to having a seed if you are a farmer and the IRS asks you if you want to pay taxes on the seed before you plant it or you want to pay taxes on your harvest you know, no one knows what the taxes will look like in the future, but you probably know what taxes it is today, right? And if taxes are lower today, and it's the lowest it's been in the long term, you probably want to pay taxes on that today because today is sure, tomorrow is not. And that's the way to kind of think of that. Okay, I don't so know. Traditional, that. So traditional means paying tax now. No, traditional so means, means yeah. Traditional means paying tax later. Yep. Rot means paying tax now and avoiding tax in the future. In the future, right. Mm -hmm. So you just have to like know what is good for you. You, you. We want to know what's good for you. And more importantly, if your income is not up to that threshold, right, it's probably, it makes sense for you because as you grow in life, your income gradually goes higher, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are in a young person, in your maybe early 20s, you want to try to maximize that Roth account as much as possible 
if you can, right? So as you go up in income, right? Then you want to start deferring some of those accounts and getting some deduction up front so you can lessen your tax bracket. Now, once you've now been able to do the second stage that I'm talking about and your income is high, you just need to do all of it now at that point, not to say, oh, am I going to do my Roth or do all of it because you need to save and have more options every time because because you're not paying taxes today doesn't mean you will not pay taxes ever. You're just delaying your opportunity to pay taxes. Like I mentioned that RMD, it's, a, it's very important that people understand that, right? And most of us as first generation immigrants, we've not, you know, getting to the point of hitting, you know, being 72 and a half. At this point, governments will take money out of your account, whether you like it or not whether the market is up or down. So it's, it's very imperative that people really understand how that qualified accounts work, especially when you are 72 and yeah. All right, thank you very much. When I get to Jimmy's level, you know, Jimmy that worries about NATO, that was Russia and uh, maximizing his uh, that, that you Can you indulge me, please? All right, I was just about to wrap up, but go ahead. <clears throat> just a quick indulgence, but I think it's a useful one. I want to know for the Roth, uh, is it possible, are there methods that you can borrow from it ahead of time before retirement, like uh, in tradition, the normal 401k? Go and pay your... No. You cannot borrow from it. Uh, you can take out your basis, but that's no one's. You can take out your basis because you've already paid taxes on it. But you mm. have to understand, once you take it out early, you cannot put any what you've taken out back in. As you probably could with borrowing uh, from your four hundred one k, and this all is right. so that's the limitation there. Yeah, that, and and it takes that advantage away from you down the road. You want to eat later, yeah, or you right, want to eat now? All right, okay. thank you very much. All right, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, thank you everybody for today. If you want to reach out to Femi, uh, there are, I have a, I've shared his contact over there, and you can also you know uh, rewatch the program today. So the webinar recording will be posted on our website or uh, you know, our YouTube channel at Blooming Edge, you will see a link to it. So and, um, if you would like to get uh, an invite for our webinar going forward, we have uh, one coming up next month. And I think our speaker is actually here today, joining us, Shidi uh, Ayalechi. So type your email in the chat box and we'll make sure to add you to you know, our invite for uh, next month's uh, webinar. And uh, finally, connect with us. You know, we are on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. And uh, with that, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time uh, having everybody today. Uh, wish you all the best and happy new year again. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, cheers, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Femi. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.